Good Saturday morning everybody. I'm back and this is going to be my semi in-depth review and summary of my teeny gun, this Kimber Solo Carry and my decision to keep or return. I have currently at this time put about 500 rounds through this gun. I have had one uh, failure to fire and I completely blame that on the or failure to eject I blame that on the ammunition it was reload and it was uh, a faulty round so uh, if I was running all factory or all higher caliber of reloaded ammunition I completely believe that I would be a hundred percent with this gun uh, this gun has been with me since the 14th of June so about 15 days because it's the 30th of June right now 2012 as you can see this is what they sent it to me with besides the paperwork they sent it to me with the, the soft sided case which is a really great little case to carry with your range bag you've got your uh, magazine pockets here and then just really very thick uh, if I had a caliper I'd tell you how thick that was but I think you can see from the pocket how thick that material is it's going to protect your gun. It's going to. It, it's much easier than carrying a full-size uh, gun case like this one. I mean, this one that that's a great gun case, but it's just it's too big, and it's nice to have a smaller case. Then they sent me the two six-round mags, and then the eight-round mag. Uh, okay, so what do I think of the gun? On reliability, I give it a ninety-five percent only because the one failure to eject. On aiming, uh, I did do a little bit of research and I think I told you guys that when you're looking through the sights of this, you do have quite a bit of play between the front sight and the rear sight. You see how it's got the, uh, you see how you got a lot of room between the front sight on the sides of it and the rear sight. But I was talking to a gun aficionado, a gun expert, and he says that's exactly what you want for a pocket gun. Uh, let's see how I can show you that. It's exactly what you want for a pocket gun. Uh, because that way you can uh, rely more on the front sight. So, that made sense to me. I don't remember exactly what else he said about it. I should have taken notes because I just described that to you very badly. But he said that is not an accident. That is absolutely on purpose. As far as a striker fired gun instead of a hammer gun, it's a new favorite. It's great. As far as the trigger, the only thing that I would change with the trigger, Kimber, is make the trigger reset more pronounced. Because when you, when you, this is safety checked, okay, no breach, no brass. When you, and that's all you have to pull back to reset the trigger. So we're pulling the trigger back from the standard position. Pull, 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 pull. There, there it goes. Now, to reset the trigger, there's no pronounced click when you're returning it. It is absolutely smooth, which I do like, but it took me to about 350, 360 rounds before I, m my muscle memory remembered where that trigger was. Uh, thumb safeties, carry condition one. If people are not carrying condition one, please practice more, train more. I have talked to dozens, if not hundreds, of cops and FBI agents and professional shooters, and they all, every single one of them, without a doubt, says if you're not carrying condition one, you could die one day. Because the time that it takes for you to rack that slide to get a, a round in the chamber, uh, also in our NRA training, they taught us that your muscle memory completely fails you in that type of situation. You need muscle memory in order to rack the slide, people. If you're not carrying condition one, maybe you need to practice and train more so you feel comfortable carrying condition one. Now, I'm not saying don't carry condition or carry condition one if you're not trained already, trained enough. But I'm telling you to train more. Okay, back to the subject on hand. I love the ambidextrous some safety, as you know, lefty, southpaw, right-brained. I can uh, carry that safe. The 
magazine release that I complained about in the very beginning has loosened up quite a bit, substantially. It's now much easier for me to eject, empty magazine, it's much easier for me to eject the magazine than it was on day one. So that just had to do some break-in period, okay? Uh, what else? Uh, the serrations on this on this on the slide to get it back. Very nice, very deep. You can see that. One of the things I'm going to work on, guys, is my lighting. I have not had any complaints about my lighting, but but by my own uh, opinion. All right. I do love the serrations. I love the the pronunciation of the slide stop. It's not really that much. It's about the same as the magazine release. It's really nice. Uh, the grips are great. I don't, they're, they've got a nice texture to them. I do not need to put talon grips or anything on them uh, like I have on other guns. These are really nicely done. I would, okay, so what would I change? I would change the trigger so it is got a more pronounced reset. I would also checker the front strap and the back strap. I wish that those were checkered and I'll probably, if I keep it, I'd probably have that done by my local gunsmith, uh, Dr. Ford. Uh, what else do I love about it? Just about everything. It's a great little gun. Uh, it's nice in Arizona, in the summers of Arizona, not to have to carry a big full-size 1911 or a full-size SIG on my, on my waist. It's nice to be able to carry this. I love that I think it comes with two magazines. I will check with Kimber and let you know in a future video. Uh, but I do have the three, including the eight rounder. Now, as far as my hands go, you guys know that I have small paws. Okay, but let's show you something here. With the six rounder in, I do have the pinky overhang. Okay, so there's, you know, thumb forward grip. That makes a difference. I don't mind it because I've got small hands, but people with big hands are going to mind it. I will tell you about, about, more about that in a second. So, we won't rack the slide because that does have rounds in it, but with the 8 round extended mag, easily gives you a full hand grip on that. Now, does that going to make it more difficult for pocket carry? Sure is. Is it going to make it a little bit more difficult for concealed carry? It could. Alright, so what I was just going to say a second ago. Uh, out of all the guys that have shot this gun, John and John and me and a couple other people, the one thing that John, my pastor, has said is that he's got larger hands. And when he's shooting this thing, it does tend to bite him right in here. Now, was he holding high? Was he holding in a pro in a, improperly? I doubt he's an NRA instructor also. But he is used to his Glock. He is used to a 1911. He's used to the big dovetail. But he said for bigger hands, you may have a problem with the slide biting you. So that is a critique from somebody else. Me, I've never had a problem. No problem with the grip at all. Striker fire, very reliable. Uh, I just love it. I, I haven't even cleaned this, guys. I cleaned it when I first got it to get some of the factory gunk off it. But I haven't even put any ballistol or any CLP through it because I've only put 500 rounds through it. I was purposely trying to see how dirty I could get it to cause a malfunction. And to Kimber's credit, it hasn't happened yet. So when is this going to go to the range again? It's going to go on Wednesday, guys, because Wednesday, the 4th of July, Independence Day, Happy Birthday, America, uh, Scottsdale Gun Club is actually having another machine gun shoot. Normally to rent an Uzi or a full, fully automatic AK or a fully automatic uh, M16, it's about $65 to $85 for the hour rental, and you have to pay for all the ammunition. The one thing I do not like about Scottsdale Gun Club, and if anybody from Scottsdale Gun Club is paying attention, they can take note on this. I don't like that you have to use their ammunition, and they're all preloaded magazines. You can't even load a magazine for the machine gun. You have to use their ammo, and they are preloaded. You know, they're charging $20 bucks for, a box of, for a magazine of 50 for 9mm guys, that's almost twice the price that it should be. But anyway, Independence Day, they're having a free machine gun shoot. You can use any machine gun that you want. You just have to pay for the magazine and the ammo. So, what should I shoot guys? Should I shoot an AK? Should I shoot an M16? Should I shoot that Uzi again? 
I may get that sight picture down on that Uzi if I do shoot that one again. So, John, John, my buddy Al and I are going to be going to Scottsdale Gun Club on Tuesday, or I'm not so, sorry, Wednesday. My wife might actually go, Laura might go, and we're going to shoot some full auto again. I had a lot of really positive responses to the full auto videos. But see how easily I get off track? Sorry guys, I'm Norwegian. It just comes with the territory. And I used to be blonde at one point in time. Now I'm really blonde, but that's just skin. Okay, so you've much more good than bad. Not really any bad. I would get a more pronounced trigger reset. Serrations, front strap, band, back strap. They may actually have that on one of the other models. I'll have to look into that. Uh, love the magazines. The magazines are really a high quality magazine. The follower is not has got an anti-tip follower. So that's really great. Uh, Kimber has got a slight reputation for bad magazines. These aren't them, the guys. These are really great magazines. Maybe it's the 9mm instead of the 45 that, you know, most Kimbers are the, the 45 caliber. But these are great. I love the magazines. What is this? What is this you guys say? Okay, this is what they call a challenge coin, guys. And if anybody doesn't know about challenge coins, in the, started in the military, I believe, it's very much popular in the military. Any squadron or Air Force base or military base has what they call challenge coins. That's what this is. This particular one is from Vance Air Force Base. Uh, let's see if... This is from Vance Air Force Base. They are a training squadron. My cousin Eric is actually a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. And his squadron is the the spitting spitting kittens so uh, the flying training squadron spitting kittens pretty cool little logo there I like that anyway challenge coins are given out to members of the military Vance Air Force Base Enid Oklahoma really great they're given these uh, the military gives out these challenge coins to their military members and that way if you're at a bar primarily at a bar and you're at a bar around a military installation, military base. Somebody takes out their coin. Let me go zoom back out again. Readjust some stuff here. If they go to the bar and slap it on the bar, that's a challenge. And all the other military personnel that are in that bar have to pull out their coins and slap them on the counter. If you do not have a coin to pull out, you are buying a round for the entire bar. So it's very important for military people to have their challenge coins on them. So if you Wikipedia challenge coin, you'll see all about it. Uh, several of the presidents have collect them, collected them. Bill Clinton actually in his official White House photograph, or photograph hanging in the White House, he's got a whole rack of challenge coins sitting on the desk behind him. I think that they're really cool. I just found out about them not too long ago. My cousin Eric sent me this one when I asked him about it. And I got this a couple days ago. This has been all, all over the country in my cousin's pocket while he was training people how to fly. He's also a pilot with United, but he's a reservist now. But he's just an absolutely awesome guy, one of my favorite relatives. So, we got that challenge coin here. I want to show you another challenge coin. Now, this is not a military challenge coin. This is an idea that I'm coming uh, to really appreciate and like. That is a much larger challenge coin. I'll put them side by side. This is about a one inch, this is about a two and a half inch challenge coin for Adam, my buddy that you've seen at the range a couple of times. He is also uh, an NRA instructor. This is his challenge coin for his company, which is called Missilefish. Okay, that's, and, and it's Alpha Aut Nula, which is for IDPA competitions. He's an IP, IDPA shooter. Alpha Aut, Aut Nula which you guys all know what that means, all or nothing. He also has little holes in the, in the uh, edges of this challenge coin, and those are for testing eye dominance. So when he gets a new person in his NRA class, in his practical pistol class, they can test their eye dominance. That's kind of cool. So he had these actually, he had a die cast, and he made these. Uh, Missile fish. Do what you say. What you do, lead, support, and inspire. Really cool. Come on, camera, focus. Uh, so here's the question, guys. Should I make 
challenge coins for AZ1911 fan. Would you want them? Uh, it's quite expensive. Uh, it can be up to $3,000 for the die, but I can find much, much cheaper dies. I'm not sure what quality they would be, but I really like the idea of having challenge coins just to give out to people and maybe to sell off of the website. I don't know. Probably sell them for between 5 and 12 bucks. Would you guys pay 12 bucks for a challenge coin? They would probably be in every single contest I held. I'd give them to all my students as in, our, in my NRA classes. I don't know. I'm really, really thinking about it, but it is expensive to get started. Uh, they cost about five or six bucks a piece when you, once you make the die. So, that's the reason I brought this out. Oh, also to make the grand decision. Am I keeping the solo? I love it, guys. I really do. Am I going to keep it? Let's give it a toy, coin toss. Now, I can't toss a coin very good. But we're going to attempt it here and see. Heads, I keep it. Tails, I send it back. This is the decision, guys. All right, so heads I keep it, tails I send it back. Let's see if I can do this here. Where did it land? Where did it land? There it is. Heads I keep it, guys. Yes, I will not be returning the solo to Kimber. I will be giving them my credit card information on Monday, and this will go into my permanent collection. Truth be told, guys, if I had to toss that coin a hundred times, I was going to keep it. But I thought I'd have a little fun with it. So there you go. The Kimber is now the Kimber Solo is my newest Kimber in the collection, which puts me back in the rotation for a new T and E gun, guys. What should I get? Put in the comments below what you think I should ask for them for the next. Hopefully, it's not going to be something that's on incredible back order or in production. Hopefully, it's something I can get very soon. You've seen most of my 1911s in my videos. You know what I have, what I don't have. I had somebody suggest getting a Desert, Desert Warrior. got a Desert Warrior already. So what should I get, guys? Let me know. Put it in the comments. Put any other comments you want. Like the video. Okay, real quick question. All the other YouTubers that I watch, a lot of the other YouTubers say, please like this video because it helps them a lot. I'm not a partner yet. I don't know if that's a partner thing. I don't know if it's an AdSense thing. I don't know. But... I'm going to ask you to please like my video. And uh, most of you are subscribed. If you're a new viewer, please subscribe. Check out my contest. Giving away up to $1,400 worth of guns. Oh, here's another question, guys. People have been asking me, can I get more than one gun if it totals less than $1,400? I am still on the fence, guys. Uh, on the fence for a couple of reasons. When I buy the gun, it's going to go on the record with my FEI file that I bought that gun, of course. Uh, and it's going to be gifted to you, but if I buy too many guns, I could start getting problems with my background checks. So I'm not sure yet. I will let you guys know probably by the middle of July, before, well before this contest ends on the 25th of July, let you know if you're going to be allowed to buy more than one gun for under $1,400. The other question I've had is, can you buy a rifle? Yes, you may get a rifle. I would prefer you to get a handgun because I'm more of a handgun guy, but if you want a rifle or shotgun for home protection, yes, you may. So there you go. Uh, the third question I had was, I had a couple of underagers, 18, 19, 15, wanting to enter the contest. Well, this is gonna be shipped to an FFL, guys. So if your dad is okay putting his name on a gun and owning, owning, air quotes, that gun, yeah, I don't see any reason why not. Ebo me, you talk to Eric, and he's not restricting the ages for his contest. I won't either. So thanks a lot, guys. Sorry this video went wrong. Sorry it went off topic. But bottom line is, Kimber Solo Carry, I know they had some bad reputation in the very beginning. They went back and they refined it, and it is about as good as you can get. I have got an XDS coming in, and we will have a fun time comparing the two because those are the uh, pretty much the two new uh, stars of the show that everybody's talking about. So Hickok45 loves his XDS. I love my Kimber Solo. It'd be really interesting to do a comparison on them. So that's all, guys. Sorry this went long. Take care. Stay safe and train. We'll see you in a couple of days.